When it comes to weird looking Chinese PC hardware equipment, ASI. ASI is pretty far up there. No frame, a weird looking wing shape and a overall look which makes you believe I can just attach a GoPro to it and I got myself a Chinese version of a DJI drone. So this is the ASI X12 kit of exceptional case fans. But without mocking anything, they are really quite exceptional. My first surprise started with the packaging. Not only did they invest some time and effort into the design, but the interior was also surprisingly well made for a Chinese company that mainly sells their stuff on AliExpress. Not bad. When I got these, I have to admit that I was kind of expecting them to be bad or cheap in the very least. But no, ALSI really tried it with these. Their idea might not have worked out the way they wanted to, but the concept is really interesting. Instead of the usual fan frame, which we all know, ASI used an X-shaped piece of plastic which holds onto the fan wings and motor in the center while having four protruding pieces at each end in order to allow the screws to be installed. It's a bit like you would just take a normal fan, cut off all the theoretical unnecessary pieces of the frame in between the screw holes and beef everything up so that it doesn't fall apart. No matter if you like the Space Invader looks this creates, it does come with a couple of positive side effects. The most prominent one to me is that you are now able to completely hide the screws. Of course, this doesn't apply to normal case fan installation, but if you were to install these on a radiator, you can remove the little cap at the end of each leg, screw it in and close it back up. Really freaking cool. Even cooler is the fact that ASI actually includes both fan and radiator screws, which was very unexpected. Now, no matter how cool or different ASROC's rocket ship design is, it also creates a huge number of issues. First off is the fact that, theoretically, there is only one way to install these fans as case fans. Having the do-it-yourself screw hole on one side forces you to install the fan in exactly one preset orientation. This then leads you to either overthinking the whole cooling concept of your build or leaving you with no other option than take different fans. An example of this would be the Asa Hive case in which there is absolutely not enough space inside of the front panel to fit these fans. I did manage to squeeze them in by removing the cap of the radiator screws and just forcing a fan screw through them cause I, I need that for my benchmark part but A this unconsensual way of using the fan is absolutely not intended and B, it, it does look kind of weird from behind. Another issue with this design is the way they are hooked up. Inside the box, you will also get a little ASI controller, a whole bunch of cables and a IR remote. In order to install all of this, you simply need to use the weird proprietary cable to connect the controller to SATA and then one of the three included proprietary to proprietary cables which allow you to connect one of the fan headers to the mini connector which is located on one of the fan legs. The controller itself is very much fine. SATA power is what I would expect from a controller produced after 1950 and the remote allows for some sick RGB effects as well as fan control if that is what you wanted to do. But the one huge positive aspect for me is that I can ditch the remote and use the proprietary to not so much proprietary connector which can be installed on the one port which looks identical from far away but is way smaller if you look closely. This adapter coming straight from heaven lets you connect the controller to a 4 pin PVM header and a 3 pin ARGB header allowing you to control the fan speed and RGB lights straight from your motherboard software, which is really nice for a change. But let's get back to the fan frame concept issue. Yeah, you see where the cable is connected? This is definitely not safe for work. Of course, you can quickly work around that by simply using zip ties, as you definitely should, but I just wanted to point out that if you don't, this will start producing a ticking noise followed by a fan cable ripping out noise, which I really don't want to hear. Okay, now let's finally get to the specs. Because of the whole new concept, this 120mm wide fan is 30mm in height. It is supposed to be able to push 42.2 CFM at 2.1mm of H2O while spinning at 1200 RPM and dealing at 2060B. All in all, the specs do not look that bad, honestly, for a 1200 RPM fan, but let's test them inside of a case. While doing our usual benchmark, ADSI's X12 set managed to keep the 3600X at 80 degrees C. 
Lowering the fan speed to 50% let the X12 barely keep up with thermal throttle at 91 degrees C. Unfortunately, the new concept did not completely work out as expected and I think I know why. If you position a device, which is definitely not a vape, right next to the fan, you can see that it does pull some air from the front and push it up from behind, but there is also a significant amount of air which is being pressed to the sides. And I do believe that because of all of the sideways directed air, which is basically just lost air, it is not performing as well as other fans. To make it clear, the concept is very nice, but this way of building makes it particularly hard to accurately point the air into a specific direction, whereas the frame of a normal fan does pretty much the whole job for you. Sure, there are better or worse implementation of, of fan wings, but the frame surely helps. The video is probably not out yet, but I'm also doing a review about the ADSI X240 AIO right now. And ADSI used the same X12 fans on there. And not to spoil anything, but having a restrictive mass behind the fan greatly improves the side air issue. On a side note, I thought not having a frame would make them quieter, but it really did not help. They are not particularly loud, but they are definitely not battling with my quietest fans. On the RGB, yes, there is RGB. No distinctive LEDs can be seen, and as long as you like the straight line design, you'll be happy. Just a heads up, if you let your controller run in auto mode, no, your fans are not broken. The third mode ALISI preset in here is essentially just a epilepsy exam. All in all, I do believe that the concept is really cool, but it should get some more attention. Maybe bend the wings a bit more to get some sort of air direction? and ditch whatever these are, cause they are definitely not helping with the sound. It's unfortunate that the fans did not perform as well as I would have liked, alias I really did try here, nice packaging, quality is not bad, especially for kind of concept, a controller which supports SATA power, PVM, a 3-pin IRGB, and a design which is definitely something new. So I do believe if you are planning to do a theme build, and these fit in there, sure, go for it. Just know that they are not the best performing fans out there. I also wanted to quickly mention that on some motherboards there might be an issue with the PVM control of the controller. For my ASRock motherboards it worked just fine, but on my Gigabyte DS3 whatever, I had to manually set the fan header to be PVM and not auto, cause Apparently only using two of the four PVM wires makes the board do weird stuff. So not a huge issue, but you should know about it in case your board does the same thing. Okay, this should be it for the ASI X12. At this point, I would like to thank Intertech for providing them to me. And if you are into weird looking stuff, have a look at the Noise Blocker Eloop X. As far as I can tell, these should be the original We Put a Ring Around the Fan fan. Yeah, okay. Bye bye.